from around the globe, it's theCUBE with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Hi, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020. I'm Stu Miniman. This year's event, of course, happened globally, uh, which means we're talking to Red Hat executives, customers, and partners where they are around the globe. Uh, and happy to welcome back to the program one of our CUBE alumni, Ashesh Badani, who is the Senior Vice President of Cloud Platforms at Red Hat. Ashesh, it's great to see you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Stu, for having me back on. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, you know, the, the usual wall to wall coverage that we do in San Francisco, well, it, it's now the, the global digital, a uh, little bit of a dispersed uh, architecture. Uh, to do these environments, uh, which uh, reminds me a little bit of, of your world. So, you know, the main keynote sage, you know, Paul's up there as the, you know, new CEO talking about open hybrid cloud. And of course, a big piece of that uh, is, you know, OpenShift and the various products, uh, you know, in the portfolio there. So, uh, first of all, we, we know there's not, you know, big announcements of, you know, launches and the like, but uh, your, your team and the product portfolio uh, has been going through a, a lot of changes and a lot of growth uh, since last time we connected. So bring us up to speed as to what we should know uh, about Cloud Platform. Sure, thanks. Um, so yes, uh, not, not a huge focus around announcements uh, this summit, you know, especially given everything going on in the world around us today. Um, but you know, that being said, we continue in our OpenShift journey, right? We started that, uh, well, you know, many years ago, but in 2015, and we had our first release focused on Kubernetes uh, and a container-focused uh, platform. Uh, and ever since then, you know, we continue to grow and to evolve. Um, at last count now, over 2,000 customers globally uh, have trusted the platform in industries, so li literally every industry, um, and also obviously uh, every geography around, around the globe. Um, so, so that's been great to, to see. Um, last summit, we actually announced a fairly significant uh, enhancement to the platform with the launch of OpenShift 4. Uh, big focus around greater manageability, uh, the ability to you know, use operators, which is you know, a Kubernetes uh, concept to make applications much more manageable um, you know, when they're being run natively within, within the platform. Uh, we continue to invest there. Um, so there's a new release of uh, the platform OpenShift 4.4. Uh, based on Kubernetes 1.17 uh, being made available uh, to our customers globally. Uh, and then really sort of this, this notion of over the air updates, right? To, to create a platform that is uh, almost sort of autonomous in nature, uh, you know, acts more like your, you know, your, your mobile phone in the way you kind of manage and, and update and upgrade it, I, I think is a, is a key value proposition that you know, we're providing to our customers. Uh, but so we're, we're excited to, to to see that and then uh, be able to share that with uh, users globally. Yeah, so Ashesh, I, I, I want to dig into that a little bit. So one of the discussions we've had in the industry for many years is how much consistency there needs to be across my various environments. Uh, we know, you know, Kubernetes is great, but it is not a silver bullet. Uh, you know, customers will have clusters, uh, they will have different environments. I have what I do in my data centers or colos. I'm using things in the public clouds and might be using uh, different Kubernetes offerings. Uh, so, you know, as you said, there's things that Red Hat's doing, but give us an insight into your customers as to how should they be thinking about it? How do they manage it? Uh, one, one of the new pieces uh, that, that we've been digging into a little bit is of course from a management standpoint is ACM. Uh, which I know OpenShift today, but going to support some of the other uh, Kubernetes uh, options uh, you know, d down the road. So how should customers be thinking about this? How does Red Hat think about managing uh, the, this ever complex world? Yeah, so Stu, you and I have been talking about this for, for several years now, right? With regard to just um, the, the kinds of things customers are doing. And, and look, let, let's start with customers first, right? Because this, it's, it's, it's all about you know, the value we provide for them. So at this year's summit, we're announcing some innovation award winners, right? So a couple of really interesting ones, uh, BMW and Ford. Um, you know, BMW, you know, building its next generation autonomous driving platform, uh, you know, using containers and then, you know, building this massive data platform on OpenShift. Uh, Ford doing a lot of interesting work with regard to um, bringing together uh, its different development teams, taking advantage of existing investments in hardware and so on. Uh, you know that they've got uh, you know, in place, you know, with the platform. 
but also increasingly companies that are, uh, you know, for example, in public sector, right? So we've got the Argentine Ministry of Health, we've got a large electricity distribution company um, adopting containers, adopting middleware technology, for example, on OpenShift, uh, and, and delivering great value, right? So network alerts when um, there's an electricity outage, you know, going from three minutes to 10 seconds. Uh, and so as you now see more and more customers doing, you know, more and more, if you will, mission critical activities on these platforms, to your points to, uh, and your question, which is a really good one, is now you've got clusters running in multiple environments, right? Perhaps in their own data center, uh, across multiple clouds, and managing these clusters at scale becomes you know, more and more critical. Uh, and so you know, we've been doing a bunch of work with regard to a team that actually joined us from IBM uh, that's been working on this uh, cluster management technology for a while. Uh, and as part of Red Hat, we're now you know, releasing in technology preview uh, advanced cluster management, trying to solve uh, and address questions around uh, what does it mean to manage the life cycle of my applications across different clusters? How do I monitor and, and view cluster health, uh, you know, regardless of you know, where they run? Um, how do I have consistent security and compliance for my policies um, across these different clusters? So we're really excited, right? It is um, really uh, interesting technology. It's probably the most advanced cluster management technology that's out in the market, right? IBM has been working on it. Uh, you know, well before you know the the team from from there, you know, joined us, and now we're making it much more widely available to all of our customers. Yeah, uh, actually, Ashesh, one one of the things you know really impressed some of those customers. First of all, congratulations, two thousand. Uh, you know, there's a great milestone there, and yeah, we we've had we're going to have some of the opportunity uh, to talk on the cube some of those essential services. You talk, you know, Ministry of Health, obviously, with the global pandemic on critically environment, energy companies need to keep up and running. Uh, I've got Vodafone Idea also uh, from India talking about how communication services, so you know, essential pieces, and definitely OpenShift, you know, big piece of the story uh, as to how they're working and managing and scaling. Um, you know, everybody talks about scale for years, but uh, the, the current situation around the globe, you know, scales something uh, that, you know, is definitely being stressed and strained and understood what, what, what's really important. Um, another piece, uh, really interesting, like to dig in a little bit here, uh, talk about OpenShift is, you know, we talk Kubernetes and we're talking containers, but there's still a lot of virtualization out there. And then from an application development standpoint, there's, you know, well, let's throw everything away and go all serverless on there. So uh, my understanding OpenShift, uh, you know, is embracing the, the full world and uh, all of the options out there. So help us walk through how Red Hat maybe is doing things a little bit differently. And of course, we know anything Red Hat does uh, is based on open source. So yeah. uh, let's talk about those pieces. Yeah, so two super interesting areas uh, uh, for us. Um, one uh, is is uh, the work we're doing based on an open source project uh, called Kubevert, uh, and that's part of the CNCF uh, incubating projects. Uh, and that that is the notion of bringing virtualization into containers. And what does that mean? Um, you know, obviously there are you know huge numbers of workloads running in virtual machines uh, globally. And more and more customers want you know, one control plane, one environment, one abstraction to manage workloads, whether they're running in containers or in, in VMs. The uh, ability to sort of say, um, can we take workloads uh, that are running in these uh, uh, KVM-based uh, virtual machines or uh, VMs running in a VMware-based environment and then bring them natively uh, and run them as containers and managed by Kubernetes and orchestrate across this distributed uh, set of clusters that we've talked about, uh, but extremely powerful. And it's a very modern approach to modernizing existing applications as well as thinking about building new services. Uh, and so that's some technology that we're introducing into the OpenShift platform and trying to see some early customer interest. Um, around, around, yeah, around. So, 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 Ashesh, yeah, you know, I've got, uh, I know I'm going to have a breakout uh, with Joe Fernandez to talk about this a little bit, but, you know, what I note is your wording on that is you're bringing VMs into the container world. And what Red Hat does well, because, you know, your, your, your background and what Red Hat does is, you know, from an operating system, you're really close to the application. So one of my concerns, you know, from early days of virtualization was, well, let's shove things in a VM and leave it there and not make any changes as opposed to what you're describing is let's 
help modernize things. You know, I, I saw one of the announcements talking about how do I take Java workloads and bring them into the cloud? Uh, there's a project called Quarkus. So once yeah. again, do, I, I hear you right. You're bringing VMs into the container world with the help to move towards that journey to modernize everything so that we were, we're doing a modern platform, not just saying, hey, I can manage it with the tool that I was doing before, but it's that application that's the important piece of it. Yeah, and, and that's a really good point, right? You know, we've you know so much to cover and probably too little time to do it, right? Because the, the one that you touched on is, is a really interesting project called Quarkus, right? Again, as you rightly pointed out, everything Red Hat does is open source. Uh, and so that's a way for us to say, look, if we were to think about Java and be able to run that in a cloud native way, right? And be able to run um, that natively within uh, a container uh, and, and be uh, orchestrated again by Kubernetes, what would that look like, right? How much could we reduce density? Um, how much could we improve performance um, around those uh, existing Java applications? Let's take advantage of all the investments that companies have made but uh, make that uh, available in a Kubernetes and cloud native world, right? And so that's what the Quarkus project is about, um, seeing a lot of interest, uh, you know, and again, because of the open source model, right? We already have uh, companies that are adopting this, right? So there's a, I think there's a, a telecom company um, based out in Europe that's talking about the work that they're already doing with this and there's already been a blog about it, uh, talking about, you know, the, uh, the value from a performance and use usability perspective that they're getting uh, with that. And then you got, so you couple this idea of how do I take VMs, bring them into containers, right? Great, existing workload, move that in, run that natively, uh, check, right? Uh, the next one, um, how do I take existing Java workloads and bring them into this modern cloud native, you know, Kubernetes based world, right? You know, making progress with that with Quarkus, you know, check. Uh, and then the third area is this notion of serverless, right? Which is, you know, I've got new applications, new services. Uh, want to make sure that they're taking advantage of appropriate resources, but only the exact number of resources are required. But do that in a way that's native to Kubernetes, right? So we've uh, been working on uh, implementing uh, K-native uh, based technologies as the foundation, as the building block um, of the work we're doing around serving and eventing towards leading uh, a more kind of portable serverless solution, regardless of where you run it across uh, any of your cloud footprints. Uh, and that'll also bring uh, the ability to have uh, functions that are provide that are made available by really any provider uh, in that same platform. So, so if you, if you haven't already sort of put all the pieces together, right? The, the way we're thinking about this is the center of gravity is a Kubernetes-based platform uh, that we make fully automated, that we make you know very operational, make it easy for different you know, uh, third party uh, uh, pieces to, to plug in, right? So sort of you know, make sure that it's, it's interoperable and modular. And at the same time, then start layering on additional capabilities. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, a lot of topics, as you said, Ashesh, and I'm glad on the serverless piece we're teasing it out because it is complicated. Uh, you know, there, there were some that were just like, well, from my application developer standpoint, I don't need to think about all that Kubernetes and containers pieces because that's why I love it serverless. I just develop to it and the platform takes care of it. And we would look at this a year or two ago and say, well, underneath that, what is it? Is it containers? And the answer was, well, it could be containers. It depends what the platform is doing. So, you know, from, from Red Hat standpoint, you're saying OpenShift serverless, you know, yes, it's Kubernetes underneath there, but then I heard you talk about, you know, live wherever it is. So um, I, 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 I saw there's, a, you know, a partner of Red Hat's in the open source community, uh, Trigger Mesh, which was answering one of the questions I had. You know, when I talk to people about serverless, most of the time it's AWS based stuff, not just Lambda, lots of other services. You know, I did an interview with Andy Jassy a few years ago, and he said, if I was to rebuild AWS today, everything would be built on serverless. So. Might some of those have containers and Kubernetes under it? Maybe, but Amazon might do their own thing. So they're doing really a connection between that. So how does that plug in with what you're doing OpenShift? How do all these various open source pieces go together? Yeah, so I would expect for us to have partnerships with several startups, right? You know, you name, you know, one uh, in our ecosystem. Um, you know, you can imagine Azure functions, you know, running on uh, our serverless platform, as well as functions provided by, you know, any third party, including those that are built by Red Hat itself, uh, you know, for the portability in this platform. Be because the, ultimately, you know, 
we're building the platform to be operational, to be managed at scale, to create greater productivity for developers, right? So for example, one of the things that we've been working on um, are in the area of developer tools. Uh, give uh, customers ability to have, you know, the, the, the product that we have is called Code Ready Workspaces, but essentially this notion of, you know, how can we take um, containers uh, and give uh, workspaces that are uh, easy for remote uh, developers to work with. Uh, we've got a great example of uh, a customer actually in India that's been able to rapidly cut down time to go from dev uh, to production from weeks you know, into days because they're using you know, things like these remote uh, workspaces running in containers. You know, this is based on the Eclipse uh, Apache, uh, the, the, the Che project. Uh, you know, for, for this. So this this notion that you know we are building a platform that can be used by uh, ops teams is absolutely true. But at the same time, um, the idea is how can we now start thinking about making sure these abstractions we're providing are extremely productive for development teams. Low. Yeah, such an important piece. Uh, last year, I got the chance to go to Ansible Fest for the first time, and it was that kind of discussion that was really important. Uh, you know, can tools actually help me bridge between what was traditionally some of those silos? Uh, they, they talked about, you know, the product developer, the, the, the infrastructure and ops team, and the app dev team all get things in their terminology and where they need, but common platforms that cut between them. So sounds like similar methodology we're seeing other pieces of the platforms. Any other, you know, guidance you talked about all your customers there, how are they working through you know, all of these modernizations, adopting so many new technologies. Boy, you talked about like DevOps tooling. Uh, it, you know, still makes my head spin when I look at some of these charts as to all the various tools and pieces that, you know, organizations are supposed to help choose and pick uh, out of there they have. So how, how, how is your team helping customers on kind of the, the organizational side? Yeah, so uh, well, there's a couple aspects here. So one is um, how do you make sure that the platform is working uh, to help these teams, you know, by that what I mean is, uh, you know, we are uh, introducing this idea and working very closely with uh, our partners globally around this notion of operators, right? Which is um, every time I want to run databases, and you know, there's so many different databases that are you know uh, out there, right? You know, SQL, NoSQL, and, and a variety of different ones for for different use cases. How can I make sure that we make those easy for customers to try out and then be able to to deploy them and build and manage them, right? So this notion of an operator lifecycle uh, to make those applications much more manageable uh, when they run with the containers. Um, so so you, make, you make it easier for, for folks to, to be able to use them. And then the question is, well, what other, uh, if you will, advice or help can we give them, right? So uh, off late, you probably heard, you know, we hired a bunch of industry experts and brought them into Red Hat around this notion of a global transformation. Uh, and be able to bring that expertise, you know, whether you know it's the folks who you know are deep in DevOps and written a DevOps handbook, or uh, you know some of the things that our industry reads a lot, like the Phoenix Project, and you know just just in, in various different you know uh, you know parts for business, and be able to start saying, look, you know these are thought leaders; they can share ideas with you, uh, and then couple that with things like open innovation labs that that come from Red Hat, as well as you know similar kinds of offerings from our various partners around the world. Uh, to help you know ease the transition into being able to develop these technologies. All right. So, Ashesh, final question I have for you. Let, let's go a little bit high level. You know, as you mentioned, you and I have been having these conversations for a number of years. Last year or so, I've been hearing some of the really big players out there, ones that are of course partners of Red Hat, but they say similar things. So, you know, whether it's you know Microsoft Azure releasing Arc. Uh, if it's you know VMware, which lots of your OpenShift customers sit on top of it, but now now they have uh, you know the uh, Project Pacific piece and, and Anzu. So many of them talk about this you know heterogeneous you know multi-cloud environment. So how should customers be thinking about Red Hat? Of course, you you partner with everyone, but you know you you do tend to do things a little bit different uh, than than everybody else. Um, yeah, I hope we do things differently than everyone else, you know, to deliver value to customers, right? So for example, all the things that we talk about OpenShift for really is about uh, industry leading. Um, and I think there's a bit of a transformation that's going on uh, as well, right, within the way how Red Hat approaches things. So uh, customers have known Red Hat in the past uh, in, in many ways for saying, look, 
um, they're giving me an operating system that's you know commoditizing, if you will, you know what the proprietary providers have been, have provided, have been giving me for all these years. Um, they provided me an application server, right? That you know uh, is giving me better value than what the proprietary providers are providing. Now, increasingly, what we're doing with you know the work they're doing around, let's say, whether it's OpenShift or you know the the uh, next generation virtualization that we talked about, uh, so on, is about how can we help customers fundamentally transform how it is that they work, that they build and deploy applications, both in a new cloud native way as well as the existing ones. And what I really want to point to is now we've got at least a fiber history on, on the OpenShift platform to look back at, to be able to point out and say, here are customers that are running directly on bare metal. Here's why they find you know, this virtualization solution that, you know, that we're providing so interesting. Here we have customers running in multiple different virtualized environments, running on OpenStack, uh, running in these multiple private clouds, or uh, sorry, public clouds, uh, and why they want distributed cluster management across all of them. You know, here's some examples that that you know we can provide you, right? You know, here uh, here's the work we've done with you know whether it's these you know uh, government uh, agencies um, or with private enterprises that we've talked to, right? You know, that are receiving innovation awards for the work we've been doing together. And so I think our approach really has been more about you know we want to work on uh, innovation that is fundamentally impacting customers, you know, transforming them, meeting them where they are, uh, moving them forward. Uh, into the world that we're going into, but then also ensuring that we're uh, taking advantage of all the existing investments that they've made in their skills, right? So taking advantage of, for example, the years of Linux expertise that they have and saying, how can we use that to move you forward? All right, well, Ashesh, thank you so much, absolutely. I know the customers I've talked to at Red Hat talk about not only how they are ready for today, but feel confident that they are ready to tackle the challenges of tomorrow. So thanks so much, congratulations on all the progress and uh, definitely look forward to talking to you again in the future. Likewise, thanks again, Stuart. All right, I'm Stu Miniman and lots more coverage from Red Hat Summit 2020. As always, thanks for watching theCUBE.